SpaceX will build thousands of Starship and Super Heavy Raptor engines and they are starting to do so in the next few months. Also, we're going to take a look at SpaceX's latest Starship progress, a first real Super Heavy test and how they are currently building the Super Heavy catch mechanism. Let's find out. What about it? Go for launch. We're go for launch. Let's light this candle. Ignition sequence start. My name is Felix and I am your host for today's episode of What About It? And as always, there's been a lot going on in the space industry lately, so let's dive right in. Starship Updates I haven't been around for a few days doing some R&R with my kids. Anyone who knows the SpaceX Starship program and Elon Musk knows that this means loads of new milestones have happened without me covering any of them. Today's episode will be packed with new insights. I already apologized to Virgin Galactic for not covering their huge milestone and Richard Branson's flight with VSS Unity. There's just too much happening in Boca Chica. Sorry Richard, great job, well done, on we go. And we're back in Mauricio's plane flying above Boca Chica, Texas where 21st century rockets are taking shape for the first time in human history. Even though Mauricio's plane doesn't go anywhere near the Carmen line, which is considered the edge of space, it arguably takes the more important pictures when documenting spaceflight history. What you're looking at here is SpaceX's latest prototype, Booster 3. The ground handling expert is paving the way for Super Heavy Booster 4, which will then power the ascent of Starship No. 20 to go above and beyond the edge of space and do the first orbital flight, hopefully in August. It didn't take SpaceX long to build it and I expect tests to be equally quick. Even though it won't actually fly, it's far more than a dummy. The sheer size of it makes ground testing mandatory to ensure a safe flight. NASA Spaceflight has cameras everywhere in Boca Chica. Check out their channel for more, it's worth it. What you're looking at here is the first ambient pressure test done with Booster 3 on Thursday, July 8th. It's incredible to see a Super Heavy booster come to life for the first time ever. These ambient pressure tests ensure that plumbing, vents and other parts on the booster work as intended. Are there leaks? Do the valves work properly? Is the internal system able to perform the necessary operations? It's unclear right now if the booster passed this test, but at least from the outside there was no apparent problem visible. Even though the Starship program has reached an incredible speed compared to any other rocket development out there, it still very much seems to be on track. Another proof of SpaceX's will to make all this happen as fast as possible is this recording directly from La Padre's cam feed. It shows Raptor engine deliveries to suborbital pad A and to Super Heavy Booster number 3. Raptor engine 57 and 59 to be precise. 57 was installed quickly and 59 installed on the night of July 12th took a bit longer it seems. The engine was raised into the engine section several times and lowered again until it finally got fixed in place. Now these engines likely are being fit checked, meaning that SpaceX workers put them into place to see if everything works out. After this they will likely be taken out again in preparation for a first cryogenic proof test utilizing SpaceX's brand new Super Heavy Thrust Simulator or Thrust Ram as it's called by some. It looks a bit different from the one we've seen SpaceX use for their Starship prototypes so far. It's taller and it utilizes different hydraulic rams. Anchored to the ground with large tilted beams that press against the inside of the pad structure, it can sustain a pressure pushing against the thrust structure from below with equal force to that of the inner 9 Raptor engines that will be installed on Booster No. 4's thrust pack assembly. But what about the outer engines that will supply the main amount of thrust for the booster? Mary, aka Boca Chica Gal, has taken this video of a very special delivery at the SpaceX construction site. It's a Raptor engine with a rather strange writing on the engine bell. Where on all the other engines, so far it just stated a number of which engine we're looking at, this one has the letters R and B in front of the number. This created quite the confusion in the Starship community and Elon Musk himself of course was ready to help out with some latest information on Twitter. Let me try to unravel some of the confusion for you. Jack Bayer asked what the point of a unique booster engine is if it has the same thrust as a standard Raptor. Musk replied saying that the center engines on a Starship will be the same as the booster engines. 
What you're looking at here is one of those Raptor Boost engines. It's been redesigned for one purpose. The best part is no part. Simplify the construction as much as possible. The outer engine ring is fixed, but it can throttle. Musk's plan up until now was that the fixed outer engines, so those that cannot move around to control the thrust vector and thus the flight path of the rocket, would not only be fixed, but also different in design. The plan was to reduce the throttling capability and in return increase the thrust. This would have resulted in a different engine design. The new plan, according to Musk, is to have all the engines be the same with one exception. The RVAC or Raptor Vacuum engine. All other engines would be virtually the same, just the mounting points for the fixed engines would be different. But the throttling capability and the thrust would be the same. 230 tons of thrust per engine and with even more engines again. The new engine count for Super Heavy will be 32 to 33 engines. This would result in 7600 tons of thrust and a thrust to weight ratio of around 1.5, which is crazy good considering the size of the rocket. It will be a 120 meter tall rocket and it won't lift off slowly. It will be capable of quite the acceleration right of the pad. Jumping back to Jack Byer's tweet, Musk also mentioned that there is a significant change in the Starship design as well. They are considering adding three extra engines, bringing the total count up to three sea level Raptor 2 engines with a common design and a total of six vacuum engines. This would put the Starship alone at 2,000 tons of thrust with a thrust to weight ratio of an insane 1.7 when fully fueled. Those are some truly astonishing numbers. Musk wasn't done dishing out more and more information though. One Speed was quick to make a mock-up on Twitter. This is what the new engine layout would look like. 33 Raptor 2 engines on the Super Heavy booster, 13 gimbal capable, 20 fixed, but all with 230 tons of thrust and full throttle capability. And on the Starship it would result in the said 6 fixed and slightly different vacuum Raptors and 3 Raptor 2 engines in the middle. Next up we'll look into how exactly Musk is planning to produce all these engines needed to build a colony on Mars and we'll have an awesome update from Alex Swan on what the catch mechanism for a super heavy booster might look like. Remember the yellow pipes? The Y family needs your support. Give the video a like, subscribe and share it with your friends on Twitter or Facebook to show the YouTube algorithm that you appreciate the content. Looking for a more direct way of support? Become a Patreon or YouTube member by clicking the join button right under the video and get some awesome perks. Gain access to our Discord server where you can meet me and the rest of the community or get a completely ad-free release of each and every episode provided just for channel members. Or do you know about the Y Warehouse? Shop for your next Starship shirt, hoodie or cap and look as awesome as you feel. Links can be found in the description, you rock! The Y family is looking for a Boca Chica photographer. Full-time job, full-time pay, full-time Starship coverage. If you have dedication, time and the will to document history in Boca Chica and you don't know how to fund all of it, look no further. Send us an email to whataboutit.contact at gmail.com with a short resume and some notes about your qualifications and why you think that you're the right person for the job and we'll get in contact ASAP. We're looking forward to your emails. And we're not done yet with insane plans and milestones revealed by Elon Musk regarding the new workhorse Raptor engine. I've talked a lot about Starship mass production on my episodes before, but there's one blank spot left. How is SpaceX planning to produce 10,000 Raptor engines in the next 10 years? Because that's the number of engines that would be roughly needed to build and operate 1,000 Starships and 200 boosters in the next 10 years. It all started with this picture tweeted out by Elon Musk. It shows 10 Raptor engines and one RVAC in one of the SpaceX Boca Chica Starbase production tents. It's at least part of SpaceX's current stockpile of engines at the Starship construction site. Not all of them are flight capable. Engine number 27, for example, all the way on the right is stripped down and likely never to fly again. It's been used on Starship Serial number 5, one of the first engines to propel an entire Starship tank section to 150 meters. The others, though, look much more recent. Engine 59 can be seen, it has already been fit checked for Booster 3. Three of the Boost engines can also be seen. They can be told apart by the different top setup. No gimbal, other mounting points. 
but basically the same engine as the gimbal capable ones. And of course the massive vacuum raptor in the background of which parts of the engine bell can be seen. So SpaceX already has quite a few engines laying around for upcoming static fires and the orbital test flight later this summer. Still, it's not anywhere near 10,000 for the next 10 years, which would be the time frame in which SpaceX is planning to build the Starships needed for their Mars city. 10,000 because 1,000 Starships proposed by Musk would need 3,000 non-vacuum engines. If they make one booster every 5 Starships, that would be another 6,600 engines. Rounded up for ease of use, it would be a staggering 10k engines with the new and updated engine layout. Currently, SpaceX is producing its Merlin engine, the Draco and the Super Draco thrusters for their Dragon capsules and the new Raptor engines at their headquarters in Hawthorne, California. The pictures you're looking at here are an official tour given by Elon Musk in 2010. The place has changed quite a bit from back then, in fact there's not much space left here. Pun intended. Due to SpaceX's colossal success, the facility is likely running at capacity now. Growing from 160 employees in 2006 to over 9,500 in February of 2021. However, all this won't be enough to feed the Starship program and Elon Musk's effort to build a self-sustaining colony on Mars by 2050. We are breaking ground soon on a second Raptor factory at the SpaceX Texas test site. This will focus on the volume production of Raptor 2, while the California factory will make Raptor vacuum and new experimental designs. With SpaceX's Texas test site, Elon Musk means this. SpaceX's primary test site for all sorts of engines. Located near the town of McGregor, it's known for occasional loud engine roars and has been for some time. And it will grow soon. The proposed engine production facility would need to be at least as big as the department in Hawthorne, maybe even more extensive. Roughly 800 to 1000 engines per year. That's about what's needed over 10 years to create a fleet to build a self-sustaining city on Mars. The city itself probably takes roughly 20 years, so it's hopefully built by circa 2050. As a bit of comparison, the biggest construction project outside of Earth's atmosphere of all times, the International Space Station or ISS, took 10 years and more than 30 missions to complete and weighs in at only 420 tons. $150 billion estimated price tag. SpaceX, on the other hand, is proposing an entire city within 20 years on another planet. Those 1000 starships, if none of them return to Earth, which of course won't be the case, would be capable of carrying at least 100,000 tons of payload to Mars. For a total of $2 billion in launch costs. In return, $2 billion would have paid for four space shuttle launches at an estimated price tag of $450 million per launch. Don't you love talking numbers about SpaceX projects? It's surreal. On we go with another insane SpaceX Starship project, the famous booster catch mechanism. You're looking at RGV's bird's eye view again from July 1st. It's the most recent aerial picture there is right now. It shows the SpaceX landing pad barely recognizable right now as it's partly covered with dirt and lots of construction equipment needed to build the orbital launch site at a full on rush mode. Specifically, I want to direct your view towards the yellow piping again. SpaceX has been busy here for some time now on what's supposed to be a fueling arm for Starships sitting on the orbital launch mount. But what if it was more than that? What if it's actually a part of the booster catch mechanism? Alex Swan has been busy with a few other people trying to assemble the parts ahead of SpaceX. And this is what they came up with. Alex, you rock. Actuated arms mounted on the orbital launch support tower, capable of swiveling out and of going up and down utilizing a rail system attached to the tower. As stated by Musk before, Alex also added a shock absorption mechanism to the construction to soften the catch and to minimize damage and stress to a booster while being caught out of mid-air. Connected via steel cables to the top of the tower and then back down over the top to the already installed drawworks at the base of the tower, it would be able to move quickly. 
As said in episode 171 on June 18th, this system has a total of 6000 horsepowers and it weighs 74 metric tons. It has a maximum of 16 lines and a maximum hook load of 1245 tons. And it can quickly stop large loads with colossal disc brakes, move them up or down, basically anything you'd need a catch mechanism to do. What do you think? Are we on the right track here? Are those yellow pipes a catch mechanism for the boosters? As always, tell us in the comments, we're eager to hear your thoughts. Musk wants to build starships to make us multi-planetary. He wants to do this because he believes that the window of opportunity for such an endeavor might be limited in time. A third world war, religious extremism or the danger that we might destroy our ecosystem. Destroying the ecosystem in my opinion would be the stupidest of all reasons and the good thing is it doesn't have to be like this. There are ways out of this dilemma and today's sponsor Ren is one of them. Ren is a website where you calculate your carbon footprint and then they give you a price tag to offset that carbon footprint as much as possible by funding projects that plant trees or protect the rainforest. It's an easy way to put your money where your mouth is and start doing something about the climate crisis. By answering a few questions about your lifestyle, you can find out your carbon footprint and how you can reduce it. No one can reduce their carbon footprint to zero, so you can offset what you have left after reducing yourself. Ren posts every receipt they get for their support of all the projects. You can research all the projects yourself. Everything is transparent. You also receive monthly updates from the tree planting, rainforest protection and other projects you support. No one can end the climate crisis on their own, but together we can make a difference. It will take a lot to end the climate crisis and you can start helping today by learning more on Ren.co. I've partnered with Ren to protect 5 extra acres of rainforest for the first 100 people who sign up using my referral link. And yes, I'm signed up too. As a little extra, and this is not part of the sponsoring anymore, Zach and Jesse from Tesla Time News have posted a BBC undercover video on their Clips channel. They don't even know that I'm promoting this here and I am doing this because I know many have doubts about the climate change. That was America's biggest oil company, ExxonMobil's top Washington lobbyist, admitting that ExxonMobil has... Is it even real or just a political agenda? And if it is real, is it made by us humans? If you're one of them, go check it out. It's not what you might expect. It's short, insightful in a surprising way, and it might make you think. If we don't do it ourselves, nothing will happen. A link can be found in the description. Today's supporter shoutout goes to Quentin46, Christopher Meyer, Greg Pavez Khan, Luke Bowers, Jay Schmidt, Res Irvin, X Tracy, Jane Tizzy, Andreas Kind, Lorenzo Patricio Ramos, White Wizard, David B. Hill, Michael Arena, Russell Avant, Grace, Pete Obermans, Jason Connor, John C. Hardy, Curtis Ahrens, Robert R. Brown and many others. You rock so much! Please know that without your support, we wouldn't even be making these videos. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Make sure to hop on our supporter exclusive Discord to join more than a thousand spaceflight enthusiasts and to give me a chance to thank you in person. Today's team shoutout goes to Brian, aka Dustball, once more. All those who joined us for our crazy 200k subscriber play button raffle were able to see them live on the stream for the first time. Since you joined our crazy bunch of space enthusiasts, you've changed so much and we all share the same opinion. I know firsthand what it means to edit a Y episode twice a week and you're doing it better than I ever could have. Brian, you rock. Revealed by Musk regra regra regarding Anyone who knows the SpaceX Starship program and Elon Musk knows that this means loads of milestones have happened without me covering any <laughs> And I'm at pressure pushing against the thrust pop But what about the... Yeah, what about it? <laughs> I've got lots of peas in there Hop, hop, hop 200 230 Oh, come on <laughs> Ah, new print. Little. Yellow. Different. 